Hi there, this is Peter Upfold, and in this screencast I want to give an overview of how you can use public key authentication to log in to SSH servers here on the Mac. Now if you have no idea what that means, this screencast probably isn't for you. But for those of you that log into remote servers or remote systems using SSH, and you want to set up the public key authentication so you're not using a username and password to log into the server, but you're actually using a key, uh, and there are various benefits to this, uh, then, then I hope in this screencast I can show how to get that set up with the Mac as a client system. Uh, first of all, I should say thanks to Nick Charlton at nickcharlton.net for the suggestion to look at this topic because it is sometimes a fiddly process or certainly a process that uh, can be a bit daunting if you haven't looked at it before. Um, so let's just have a quick uh, overview of what the benefits of using a public key system uh, public key authentication to log into your SSH systems might be. Well, first of all, there's convenience. You can actually have one key and one passphrase to log into multiple accounts on multiple different servers without having to rem remember all of the uh, usernames and passwords for every different server. You can have one key that logs into everything that you have access to. And also, security. You can uh, once you've set this up properly, you can actually turn off logging in on the server with a username and password. You can turn off logging in with a username and password so that um, any attacker that tries to get in, you know, if they want to try and brute force uh, a username and password combination, they're simply not able to at all because the username and password logging in isn't enabled. So that means that they're going to have to crack a two kilobit key which is much more difficult and obviously completely and utterly infeasible. So again there are convenience and security benefits to using public key authentication to log in. So let's go ahead and actually set this up on this computer. Uh, there are two stages essentially to getting this set up. The first stage is you have to create a key pair on the local system and the second stage is you then have to copy the public key from that pair uh, over to the server so that the server knows that when someone logs in with that key that matches the public key uh, that that's authorized. So let's go straight ahead to the first stage. I'm going to open up terminal and we're going to generate a key pair on the local system. So I'm going to say ssh-keygen space t uh, space dash t space RSA that generates a key pair. I'm going to be asked where I want to save the key. I'm going to accept the default. I recommend you do the same just by pressing enter there. Uh, now we have an option to enter a passphrase. Now you don't have to enter a passphrase uh, but failing to do so does mean that anyone that gets hold of the pub private key file can immediately and without further question log into everything you have access to. Adding the passphrase just means there's an extra layer of security if that file uh, gets into the wrong hands. And you can get Mac OS X Terminal to remember the passphrase in the OS X keychain, which means you don't have to be constantly typing in that passphrase. So really, I'd recommend you do it, especially if you're using OS X as the client system, just because it, it doesn't take any more effort on your part. So I'm going to type in a passphrase uh, and repeat it and there we go we've created a uh, a key pair here on the local system now the next thing we need to do is move the public key file not the private key which is what it's calling the identification here we need to move the public key file which is on in this location over to the remote server then put that into a special file called authorized keys and then that server will accept us logging in with that key so let's uh, just do that process now. Now, for reasons that may become apparent, I have to go and log into a different user to copy this key across. So what I'm going to do now, you may not necessarily have to do exactly. Um, but let's just find where that key is here in the finder, where the uh, public and private keys are stored. If I go to go, uh, the go menu in for the finder, and then say go to folder. I can go to the .ssh folder, which is normally hidden, and you see we here we have the private key file and the public key file. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that public key file over to my other user, 
which has access to the server already uh, and then I'll show you from that user I'll show you how we uh, get this new key to be authorized so I'll join you on the other side right so I've logged into my other user which has access to the, access to the server and I've copied across the IDRSA pub public key file uh, and what we're going to do is as I said add the contents of that public key file into the authorized keys file on the server now in your case you may just need to log into the server as normal with the username and password so let's just log into the server I'm now logged in and I need to now add this to my authorized keys file now if you haven't set this up before on the server you may not have an authorized key uh, an authorized keys file so you may need to create it so you just need to uh, I'm just going to issue the command touch dot ssh slash authorized keys with a z um, I'd spell it with an s but it is with a z it must be with a z uh, and what that's going to do is if the file doesn't exist it will just create a blank file and if the file doesn't exist it won't do anything uh, that's going to break anything uh, so obviously in your case if you issue that command touch dot ssh slash authorized underscore keys that's going to create that file for you if you get an error message about not having a dot ssh directory you should have one but uh, you can go ahead and create that directory first um, so one, uh, in my case I ha this file already exists in your case we've now created that file so now I just need to edit it now you can edit it with whatever editor you want I'm just going to open it up in vim I'm just going to say uh, vim.ssh authorized keys now you'll notice here as I said I have already set up several keys to be authorized to log in to this system and these are the public this is the public key identifiers for each one of those key pairs which is why I don't have a problem with showing you the the actual data from these keys in the screencast because they're the public key it's fine in fact it's encouraged that you share your public key because then people can give you access to stuff so in again uh, if you if your first time setting this up on the server your file will be blank and all you need to do is paste the contents of the public key file you got uh, you generated into the authorized keys file so I'm going to open up the IDRSA pub file that I made on the local system here uh, it doesn't want to open it up in anything specific let me just override that there we go I'll open it up in text edit it should open fine in any text editor here we go and as you can see it looks the same format as the other keys I just need to take this line copy it and I'm just going to paste it at the bottom of the authorized keys file in your case you'll just need to take the contents of IDRSA pub copy that and paste it into the authorized key file it could be the it could, you know it will be the only line in that file but that's fine uh, now I'm just going to save and quit the authorized keys file and what that should have done now is it should have set that key up so that's an authorized key and if I go back to my other user I should now be able to log into the server and it should work so let's try that out now a quick stop press moment we will we will go over to the other user in just a moment um, you do need to make sure that on the server the dot uh, SSH file has the correct permissions set that needs to be set so that the permissions are read write for the user and no other permissions granted so you just need to make sure that that those permissions are right now I believe that's going to be uh, permissions mode 600 so you may need to just say chmod uh, 600.ssh authorized keys and let me just verify yes that's correct so you need to run chmod 600 dot ssh authorized keys just to make sure the permissions are right if the permissions on the authorized keys file on the server aren't correct then this won't work so it, it has to be those permissions having said that let's go back over to the demos uh, the demo user and see if we can log in now